so I mean, what I said itself is right in terms of how the capacitance changes, but I misread the question. And the question isn't asking how does the capacitance change, it's asking how the energy storage changes. And that is actually a quite tricky question, which is why the question is asking you for two specifically different scenarios, where uh, one, where the amount of charge does not change, and a second scenario, where the voltage difference doesn't change. Those two different scenarios will result in different answer. Um, let me see if uh, your textbook explicitly covers that. If they don't, then it might be something I want to just to briefly work through. Um, yeah, so let me just briefly work through. This is another um, quantitative question that's uh, masquerading as a qualitative question because it is a quite quantitative question. Okay, so this is the question that they're asking. How does the energy stored in an air gap capacitor change when a dielectric is inserted? So what we just talked about is useful in that you should know how capacitance changes as a dielectric is inserted. So let me give this a symbol. The capacitance for an air gap capacitor is going to be C naught. That's gonna be capacitance of that capacitor. And if a dielectric is inserted, that's gonna be just to C. And what you know with the properties of dielectric is that capacitance with the dielectric will be greater than capacitance without the dielectric. So this is one of the facts that you need to know. Now, uh, because it's asking you for how, something about the energy stored in the air gap capacitor, you also need to know the amount the expression for energy stored in capacitor. And there's a three different expressions that, that that's good to know all three. So let me write them down. Um, I'm gonna first write down the version that I used to memorize the potential energy stored in a capacitor. Um, I memorize it as well, charge times voltage, because that's uh, frankly how voltage was introduced. It's uh, related to potential energy. Now there's a bit of a wrinkle here, which I cover in lecture, which is that there is a factor of one half. <laughs> it's a, um, let's see, do I go through this in the lecture? I think I do a little bit. Um, so you can look at this in two different ways. You can work this out using integral, um, or you can work this out through a double counting method. Either way, there's a factor of one half. It doesn't really change the answer here, but there's a factor of one half. Now, the other two expressions, it comes in by applying the definition of capacitance. Definition of capacitance is Q over V, which means, um, so you see how even though this is potential energy stored on a capacitor, it doesn't use the capacitance anywhere. It refers to two different dynamical quantities. And that makes this expression a little bit um, difficult to use at different times. Uh, in, in, in fact, these two scenarios are exactly when it's uh, not quite convenient to, you, to use this expression because one of them has the charge Q not changing. All right, that's great. But what if V changes? <laughs> so um, it doesn't unless I know the direction to which V is changing, it's not telling me how the potential energy will change. And this uh, second scenario where it's connected to a battery, so the battery maintains the same voltage, the, this expression once again, even though voltage, yeah, I know it doesn't change, but I don't know how the charge is changing. So, so there's two different expressions that we can write down that's basically utilizing this to eliminate one of the other two uh, one of the two dynamical quantities so that your expression for energy is really in terms of one free dynamical quantity and a constant parameter, or at least the parameter that <laughs> would be constant except in a situation like this where you're deliberately changing it. So um, you can imagine doing the algebra and when you go through the algebra, these are the two expressions you will end up with. One is one half and let me do this. Uh, in my head, I'm gonna 
plug in V is equal to Q over C. So it's going to be Q squared over C. That's one. That's the one that will be convenient to use where Q remains constant. The other one is one half and plug in Q is equal to CV. So it's going to be C times V squared. So as you look at these two expressions for energy, you can see that how the stored energy changes uh, with the change of the capacitance, it's going to be quite dependent on if it's your voltage that remains the same or the charge that remains the same. If it's a charge that remains the same, then as you increase capacitance, your potential energy is going to go down. Um, and you can kind of look at it as, oh, it's because the voltage is decreasing. And um, yeah, it, it's because the voltage is decreasing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if your voltage remains the same, then as you increase the capacitance, it, the stored energy increases. And you can look at it as, again, it's because the amount of charge is increasing. And um, yeah. So I guess I'll just leave that there. Um, so, so yeah, this is a part C of that question. It is a quite tricky question. And, uh, it, and uh, this particular scenario like this, you are going to see a similar scenario when we start doing circuits. Because <laughs> I think I keep emphasizing this and I keep emphasizing it because it really can't be overemphasized which is that a lot of the problem solving you do in physics, it's going to involve expressions like these, where it involves three or more dynamical quantities. And when the question tells you that one thing changes, or I guess you might be looking at this, um, where one thing changes and how the other quantities change, it depends on what's going on with those other quantities. And you are going to have a similar situation when dealing with the circuits in terms of the power dissipated by register and Ohm's law. So I just uh, want to prime your mind to, to watch out for that.